So the first talk is by Yuichi Iwata, and he will talk about a new kernel for feedback. Yes. Thank you for the introduction. Yeah, I represent a new kernel for feedback vertex set. Here, this kernel can be computed in linear time, linear in the size of the graph. Okay, so this is a, a famous problem called the feedback vertex set. We are given an undirected graph and the parameter k, and our task is to delete at most k vertices so that the remaining graph becomes acyclic, like this. Okay? So first, I will present a background of this research, and then I will introduce an important concept of LP realization called persistency. And then, by exploiting uh, this persistency property, we obtain a new kernel for feedback vertex set. And then, finally, we show that this kernel can be computed in linear time. Here, linear means linear in the graph size, but can be polynomial in the parameter k. Okay, so this is the outline of this talk. So uh, there are many FPT algorithms for feedback vertex set, such as branching, iterative compression and branching, or highest degree branching, or LP guided branching. And also there are a faster randomized algorithm, randomized sampling, or cut and cut, count DP. And here, uh, this algorithm, LP guided branching, which is obtained by <coughs> me and Wallstrom and Yoshida in 2016. Uh, this algorithm uh, uses a LP relaxation of the feedback vertex set. And actually, this, can be, uh, this algorithm can solve a wide range of problems, not only feedback vertex set, but also its generalization, like a group feedback vertex set or a unique label cover. And the uh, key of this algorithm is actually the persistency of the LP relaxation. And by using uh, this property, half integrality and the persistency, uh, we obtain a new kernel for feedback vertex set. So this is the topic of this talk. Okay, here, uh, OSTA has polynomial in n factor. And actually, for most of the algorithm, the running time is not linear in the input size. Uh, here, for feedback vertex set, we can assume that the number of edges is linear in the number of vertices. So n and m is the same. Okay, so for example, uh, this algorithm, iterative compression branching algorithm, uh, we need to iterate compression uh, over uh, n times, n is the number of vertices, so this is at least quadratic, and moreover, these two branching algorithm, iterative compression branching and the highest degree branching, uses a special solver for a, a metroid parity to solve a special very sparse instance. So this part is also not linear in the size. And for LP guided branching, this algorithm uh, needs to uh, solve the LP relaxation. And because this LP is quite large, has exponential number of constraints, so in order to obtain a polynomial time algorithm, we need episode method. So this is not also not linear in the input size. And uh, this random sampling algorithm actually runs in time linear in the input size, but the cut and count DP is not. Uh, this algorithm also uses iterative compression and isolation lemma to uh, uh, combat uh, the original problem to a weighted version. So this is not also a linear time APT algorithm. And we usually use uh, this OSTA notation because optimizing the polynomial time is part is tiring. Uh, but uh, because uh, the running time, uh, we have two factors, f of k and polynomial in n, so we cannot compare two algorithms. For example, which is the better for uh, uh, random sampling or cut and count? The random sampling runs in 4 to k and linear in the input size, but cut and count dp has smaller f of k, 3 to k, but its polynomial dependency is not linear. So if k is very small, then the random sampling is faster than the cut and count dp. But if k is large, then the cut and dp is faster than the random sampling. Okay? So we usually uh, aim to two extreme directions. In one direction, we consider k as a constant. So f of k is also constant. 
So we aim to improve the polynomial in end part. Okay? So the extreme goal is to obtain a linear time FPT algorithm, FPT algorithm with whose dependency on n input size is linear. And on the other directions, we consider a case large, so the exponential dominates the polynomial. So uh, we aim to improve the f of k part. So the polynomial part can be already efficient, so we can ignore that part, and we aim to improve the uh, f of k uh, uh, exponential in k part. Okay. So uh, the, uh, this research is strongly motivated by pace challenge. This is an annual implementation challenge started in 2016. And in the first pace challenge, feedback vertex set is selected as the subject of track B. Okay. So I think this is a nice opportunity for showing the practicality of our method. This one, LP guided branching. So I decided to participate in this competition. However, I found that our algorithm is actually not practical at all. Because as I explained, uh, the, in this algorithm, we need to solve exponential size LPs. And in the paper, we just say that uh, this LP can be solved in polynomial time by using the episode method. But however, in practice, this episode method is not practical at all. So we cannot use, uh, we cannot make uh, this algorithm practical. So in order to make uh, this algorithm practical in the uh, challenge, during the challenge, I have developed a uh, order of KM time, ringing a, oh, hi. Just go back to the previous slide. Yeah. I mean, why do you always, you can also do plan and do it. You don't have to solve completely an absurd measures to many of these things. Sorry? You Me? can also apply prime and do it. And it's quite practical, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I try to uh, use a uh, uh, LP solver package, but uh, it actually does not work for our LP. It, it takes quite a ro ro long time. OK, so uh, in, in the challenge, uh, instead of using the general LP solver, we developed a specialized LP solver for this problem. And this LP solver actually runs in order of k time. k is a solution size, and m is a, a graph size. Okay? And uh, this part is quite technical, so I will present an overview of uh, this algorithm at the end of this talk. And actually, uh, we uh, succeed to uh, generalize this LP to solve more general LPs, such as the LPs for group feedback vertex set or unique label cover, and obtain a linear time FPT algorithm for those, algorithm, for those problems. And then, uh, by exploiting the persistency of the LP relaxation, uh, we obtain a linear time and smaller kernel for feedback vertex set. So this is the main topic of this talk. And uh, this kernel is very simple. I think this is simpler than the one in the textbook, and except the proof of the persistency. And I think this is quite natural if you are familiar with the existing uh, polynomial size kernel for feedback vertex set, and also if you are familiar with the persistency of the feedback vertex set. So um, then our solver won the first place in the challenge. Okay, so uh, this is the existing result for uh, the kernelization of feedback vertex set. Well, there is a, a polynomial size kernel, and the previous best one has size 4 times k square vertices and 8 times k square edges. And it is also known that uh, this problem does not admit subquadratic size kernel, subquadratic edge kernel, unless some uh, complexity assumption. And uh, our kernel has smaller size, actually. The size of our kernel is 2 times k square plus k vertices and 4 times k square edges. And moreover, this kernel can be computed in time linear in the graph size. So the running time is k to polynomial, uh, polynomial in k times n, n is the number of vertices. Okay, so this is our result. And here, I'd like to say that we usually focus on improving the kernel size, and we usually ignore the running time of the kernelization. But yeah, I'd like to say that 
canalization time is as important as the kernel size. But why? OK, so let's assume that we have a linear time strict kernel, polynomial size kernel. OK, so uh, given an input, uh, parameterized problem, input to the parameterized problem, instance i and parameter k. And if we can convert this instance into a smaller instance, i prime and k prime, in time linear in the input size, then by applying uh, uh, some other FPD algorithm to the reduced instance, then we can solve the original instance in time this line, like this. Polynomial in k times linear in the input size plus f of k times polynomial in k. So that is uh, the, running, uh, the polynomial in the running time of any FPT algorithm can be improved to linear in n by applying a linear time kernel as a preprocess. Okay? So, for example, in the case of feedback vertex set, by using our linear time kernel, we can improve the uh, polynomial dependency on n in the fastest algorithm to linear, like this. So for example, for deterministic algorithm, we have a, a highest, branching, uh, highest degree branching algorithm that runs in 3.462k and some polynomial in n time algorithm, and this algorithm can be improved to linear time FPT algorithm with the same F of k. And also the cut and count dp, the running time of the cut and count dp can be improved to 32k and times linear in n. Okay? So I think uh, obtaining a linear time kernel is as important as obtaining a uh, small kernel. Okay? So, if we have a linear time kernel, then focus on improving on f of k part is justified. Okay, so moreover, if we have a linear time kernel and also we have a smaller size kernel, then by combining these two kernels, we obtain a linear time and small size kernel. So in the case of uh, kernelization, the fastest running time and the smallest kernel size can be achieved simultaneously. Okay? So I think uh, obtaining a faster kernel is as important as obtaining a small size kernel. Okay? So now I will introduce the uh, concept of persistency. As the easiest example, I will present a uh, uh, vertex cover kernelization, which uses a uh, piece relaxation. This is a very famous canalization for vertex cover. And then I will present the uh, persistency of feedback vertex set. Okay, so this is a standard LP relaxation of vertex cover. Okay? For each vertex, we assign a value between 0 and 1. So 1 means this vertex should be contained in the vertex cover, and 0 means other. other. Okay, so for every edge, uh, we constrain that uh, xu plus xv is at least one. And this LP actually has the following two important properties. The first property is called half integrality. This property says that there is an optimal LP solution that uses only values zero or one or half. Okay, so this is called half integrality. And the second property is called persistency. This property says that if, they, uh, if a vertex has value zero in our optimal solution, then there is a minimum vertex cover that avoids that vertex. And conversely, if a vertex has value one in our optimal LP solution, then there is a minimum vertex cover that contains that vertex. And by using uh, these, these two properties, it is not difficult to obtain uh, uh, twice, uh, two times uh, K vertex size kernel. Okay, so let's see an example. Okay, so let's consider this graph. And this is an optimal LP solution to uh, this, this graph. So we assign zero to these vertices, assign one to these vertices, and half to these vertices. Then uh, this is the minimum vertex cover. Okay. Then, okay, so uh, we can use uh, uh, apply the following reduction called persistence reduction. So let Vi be the set of vertices 
whose value is i in the uh, fixed optimal half integral solution. Okay? So from the persistence, we know that uh, there is a vertex cover S, minimum vertex cover S, that uh, avoids every vertices in uh, V0 and contains every vertex, vertex in V1. So we can apply the following reduction. If uh, the LP solution is already greater than k, because the LP solution is always uh, at the most the size of the minimum vertex cover, so we immediately know that there is no minimum vertex cover of size k. So we can return no. Otherwise, from the persistency, we can delete v0 and v1 and decrease k by 1, like this. So if we have uh, this AP solution, then we can delete this integral part from the graph and delete k by 2 and obtain this instance. Okay? And the size of the uh, reduced instance is at the most twice of the number of vertices of value half. Okay? So the after the reduction, the number of vertices is at the most twice of the optimal rep solution. Okay? And because optimal rep solution is at the most k, we obtain a, a kernel of size twice of k. Okay? So in this way, by exploiting the uh, a persistency, we can obtain a, a small kernel for vertex cover. Now, let's consider the case of feedback vertex set. Okay, so in this, instead of considering the uh, standard feedback vertex set, we consider the following variant, which called feedback vertex set with undeletable S. S is some vertex. Okay, so this is a natural problem appears in when solving the feedback vertex set by Planck algorithms. Okay, so as an input, uh, in addition to the graph and the parameter k, we are given uh, undeletable vertex s. And our task is to find whether there is a subset s that avoids this undeletable vertex s, uh, which is a feedback vertex set. Okay, so for example, in this case, by deleting these three vertices, we obtain a, a set graph, so the size is three. So this is a, uh, so this uh, problem appears when we solve the feedback vertex set by branching. So, for example, if we know uh, we decide that uh, S is not containing the uh, feedback vertex set by branching, then we pick its neighbors and branch into cases whether V is containing the uh, feedback vertex set or not. And uh, in one case we delete it, and in the other case, we contract it to S. So we again obtain an instance of feedback vertex set with undeletable S. Okay, so now we consider the following LP, which we call a cycle transversal problem. Okay, here we assign uh, some uh, value between 0 and 1 for each vertex, and we constrain that uh, x0 should be 0, and for every S cycle, which we define later, uh, the sum of XV over vertices on uh, this work is at least one. So this is our LP. And we will show that this LP has a nice property, half integrality and persistency. Okay, so here S is an undeletable vertices, and VW denotes the multi set of vertices on the work. So if this work visits uh, some vertex twice, then uh, this sum for this sum, XV contributes twice, twice to the sum. Okay. And here, uh, S cycle is a closed walk, starting from S and go back to S, and containing a simple cycle. Uh, I will show you an example later. Okay. So and by changing this condition, uh, we can obtain uh, uh, LPs for various other problems. For, so for example, uh, for group feedback vertex set by changing this definition to uh, closed work, which result in uh, non zero value. Then we are within uh, our LPs for group feedback vertex set. Yeah? So why a closed work? Why not a simple cycle that contains S? Well, uh, it's uh, difficult to explain, but uh, by, by this definition, we can obtain a half integral relaxation. If we, if we constrain it to be simple, is there any intuition for this? Well, 
Well, we, we obtain this LP relaxation through uh, uh, another technique called K sub modular relaxation. So uh, it's, it's difficult to explain why, why we need to allow a uh, non simple cycle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, anyway, uh, let's, let's consider this LP. Then uh, here uh, we can see that uh, this, the solution to this LP gives a lower bound on the solution to the feedback vertex set with undeletable S. Okay? So if we have a solution for uh, this problem, then by assigning one to all the vertices in S, we obtain a feasible solution to this LP. Okay? So uh, by solving this LP, we obtain a lower bound of the solution size. Okay, so now let's see several examples. Okay, let's consider this graph. Here, these two edges are double edges. Okay? And this is a simple cycle, and this is also an S cycle. Okay? And this is also an S cycle. This is not a simple cycle. Here, we visit uh, this edge twice, so like this. This is an S cycle because it contains a simple cycle here. Okay? On the other hand, this is not an S cycle. Here we visit these two edges twice, so like you turn here, and like this is not a cycle because this does not contain a simple cycle. Okay. On the other hand, this is a, a cycle because it contains a, a double edge here, and we assume double edge as a simple cycle, so this is a cycle. And this is an example of a cycle transversal <coughs> of size 2.5. Uh, we can see that for every a cycle, the sum of XV over vertices on that work is at least one. So for example, for this cycle, the sum is one. And for example, for this exact cycle, the sum is uh, half, zero, plus half, plus zero, plus zero, plus half, plus zero. So the sum is one. Okay. And this LP admits the following two properties, half integrality and persistency. The half integrality is the same as the case of matrix cover. There exists a minimal LP solution that uses only values 0, 1, or half. And the second property persistency is slightly different from the case of matrix cover. Well, uh, this property says that there exists a minimum feedback matrix set avoiding S, satisfying the following two property. The second property is the same as the matrix cover case. If a vertex has value one in an optimal LP solution, then there exists a minimal solution to the uh, feedback vertex set that contains that vertex. Uh, the first property is slightly different. If a vertex has value zero, and moreover, if it is in the same co connected component in the induced graph of uh, vertices of value zero, then there is a minimal um, feedback vertex set that avoids that vertex. So this is slightly different. But by using uh, these two properties, it is not difficult to obtain an FPT algorithm for feedback vertex, like this. So we can apply the following reduction, which, which is also called persistency reduction. Okay, so let R of X be the set of vertices reachable from S uh, in the induced subgraph of vertices of value zero. Okay? So the passage sense says that there is a feedback vertex set that contains vertices of value one and avoids every vertex, every vertex in uh, R of X. Okay? So we can apply the following reduction. Because the size of the LP solution gives a lower bound on the solution size of the uh, integer, integral problem, so feedback vertex set, so if the LP solution exceeds k, then we immediately know that there is no solution of size at most k. So we can return no. Otherwise, we delete v1, because we know that there is a solution that contains v1. So we delete it and decrease k by v1. And then we contract this reachable set into S. This is safe, because there is a, a optimal, a minimum feedback vertex set that avoids this reachable set. Okay? So for example, in this case, this is an optimal uh, LP solution. So we delete these two vertices and contract reachable set. 
these are reachable set, and contract this reachable set into S. So we obtain the reduced instance like this. Oh. Okay. Then, uh, by using this reduction, we can obtain a FPT algorithm as follows. Okay, so, so first, let's pick some arbitrary vertex S and branch into two cases, whether uh, S is containing the solution or not. If S is containing the solution, we delete it and pick another vertex and continue the branching. And otherwise, we make S undeletable, so uh, we can apply the persistence reduction for this undeletable vertex S. Okay, so we compute the minimum LP solution X and apply the persistence reduction and pick the neighbor of S. So after applying the persistence reduction, the neighbor of S has value half. And by branching on this vertex, we can ensure that the LP solution strictly increases thanks to the persistence reduction. So we branch into two cases like this, delete V or contract it to S. And by repeating this process, we can solve the problem. And the running time is actually 4 to K. This is because for every branching, uh, uh, K decrease or uh, the lower bound increase. And here, uh, so K minus uh, the lower bound strictly decreases for each branching. And from half integrality, uh, the amount of the decrease is at least half. So initially, the gap is, of course, at most twice of k. So uh, uh, is at most k. So um, in each branching, the gap decreases by half. So the depth of the search tree is bounded by twice of k. So we obtain an FPT algorithm with this running time. Okay, so this is the FPT algorithm. Now, uh, in the remaining top, I'll, I'll show that uh, this persistence reduction can be used to obtain a kernel for feedback vertex set. Okay? Here, uh, after applying this reduction, uh, in contrast to the case of the vertex cover, uh, we cannot bound the, uh, the number of vertices. This is because we do not attach vertices of value zero that are not reachable from S. Okay? However, uh, we can bound the degree of S. After applying the persistence reduction, we can see that uh, uh, the neighbors of S have value half in the optimal LP solution. So the degree of S becomes at most twice of K. And for feedback vertex set, this actually leads to a polynomial size kernel. Okay, so now let's see the, our new kernel. So first, I will review our previous kernels. Okay? In all the previous kernels uses the following approach. First, we apply some basic reductions to ensure that every vertex has degree at least three. This is very simple, like this. If there is a vertex of degree one, we can delete it. If there is a vertex of degree two, we can contract it. And after applying uh, these reductions, we can ensure that the uh, minimum degree is at least three. Then we, are, we compute an S flower to bound the maximum degree. For every high degree vertex, we compute an S flower. Here, S flower is uh, the set of simple cycles that uh, contain S, and each of them do not share uh, any other but any vertices other than S. Like this, this is a, a flower of size one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And uh, because from each cycle, we need to delete at least one vertex. So the size of S flower gives, also gives a lower bound of the uh, minimum, the size of the minimum feedback vertex set with undeletable S. So if this is greater than K, we immediately know that S should be contained in a feedback vertex set, so we can delete it. Otherwise, there are two cases. The degree is small, we are happy, and or the connectivity is small in some sense, so there is some small separator hitting all the cycles, and we can apply some other reduction, and finally, 
say, for example, in the case of Thomas Carnell, we can ensure that that uh, degree is at most four times k minus one. Now, we are within a, a degree lower bound and degree upper bound. And for feedback matrix set, this immediately reveals to a kernel size. Why? Okay. Uh, from the uh, degree lower bound, we know that uh, the graph has average degree at least 1.5. Okay. On the other hand, uh, forest has average degree less than 1. And because we have a degree upper bound, so uh, say, say, uh, so if the maximum degree is capital D, then by deleting k vertices, we can delete only at most d times k edges. So by combining these three inequalities, we can show that the number of vertices should be small. And if the maximum degree is d, we can show that the number of vertices is at most capital D times k plus k, and the number of edges must be at most twice of d times k. Okay. In this way, uh, all the previous kernels obtain the uh, kernel, uh, prove the kernel size. Okay. And in our case, instead of applying uh, this s flowers reduction, we apply the persistence reduction. Okay. We can show that the degree is at the most twice of k, so we obtain a smaller size, kernel size. And moreover, we, we will show that uh, this uh, kernelization actually runs in linear time. Okay. So here, the S power is actually the uh, integral dual of our LP. So the, uh, our LP is a, a covering LP, and its dual is a packing LP. So S cycle packing LP, and S power is actually the uh, integer problem of this LP. And so there is uh, a gap between the uh, integer problem and LP problem. So this gap leads to uh, uh, the degrees of the degree. Okay, so now, oh, so this, this is a persistence reduction for feedback vertex set with undeletable S. But uh, we w now we want to construct a, a modified version of this persistence reduction for feedback vertex set because we do not know whether S is contained in a solution or not. Okay? So this is a persistence reduction. And now we use the following uh, reduction, persistence reduction for feedback vertex set. In the case of undeletable, if we know that S is undeletable, then uh, we can delete the integral part, uh, the vertices of value one. But uh, if we do not know that S is undeletable, then we cannot delete it. But instead, but instead, we can insert double edges. Okay, so this is a, a, a optimal LP solution to this graph. With uh, if we assume S is undeletable, then the optimal solution to the uh, uh, S cycle transversal LP gives this, these values. And now, so we know that from the persistence property, we know that if we do not delete S, then we can assume that these two vertices are contained in the solution. So we can insert W edges here. If we delete it, uh, if we do not delete it, then these two vertices must be contained in the feedback vertex set. Okay? And then we remove all the bridges connecting S and the three component of G minus V1 minus S, like this. Here, by deleting these three vertices, you obtain these three connected components. And uh, the upper three are three components. And the lower one, lower one is not a three component. Then we delete these three bridges connecting S and three component. This is correct because if we do not delete S, we need to delete the vertices of value one. So these three uh, components become three. So uh, this edge cannot be contained in any cycle. So we can delete it. Okay. So we obtain a reduced graph like this. Okay. Now we can see that 
after the reduction, the degree of S is at most twice of the optimal AP solution. And of course, this is at most K, so we, we, we can bound that the degree of S is at most twice of K after the reduction. Uh, this is because if uh, there, there is uh, two edges such that uh, for, for every edge, uh, the nearest vertices of value half must be unique because otherwise we obtain a S cycle uh, such that the sum of XV over uh, the vertices on that work is exactly half, which is a contradiction. So after the reduction, uh, the degree of uh, the vertex S becomes at most twice of K. Now we obtain a kind of right like this. So we apply the basic reduction, and if K uh, becomes uh, less than zero, we return no, and if uh, the graph becomes small, we return it, and if the maximum degree is already small uh, from the previous argument about uh, uh, the average degree, uh, we can say that there is no solution of size K, so we can return no. Otherwise, we pick a high degree vertex and apply the persistence, to, uh, the persistence reduction to this vertex, and we repeat this process until all the vertices have degree at most twice of k. Okay, so the running time of this canalization is, because in each iteration, we delete at least one edge. So the number of iteration is at most m. And the running time of solving the LP is, of course, uh, some polynomial in m. So this runs in polynomial time. And the kernel size is uh, twice of uh, k square. And finally, uh, in the remaining talk, I will show that this can be improved to like this. So the number of iterations can be improved to k square, and the running time of LP solver can be improved to k times m. And in this way, we obtain a linear time kernel for feedback vertex set. Okay, so now let's move on to the final part, linear time kernelization. Okay, so first, uh, I will bound the number of reductions, and then uh, we will, uh, I will show that uh, we can solve the LP in linear time. Okay? So this is a key observation. Uh, for each iteration, either k decreases, or we apply the persistency reduction. Of course, the, uh, the number of degrees of k is at most k, so this is linear in k. So we want to bound the second case. Okay. And the clear observation here is that after applying the persistency reduction, so before applying the reduction, S has degree greater than twice of K, but after applying the reduction, the degree of S becomes at most twice of K. So S must be incident to at least one double edge after the reduction. So here, if there is a double edge, any feedback vertex set must delete at least one of the two endpoints of the double edge. So there cannot exist many double edges. Okay? So we are the following two rules. The first rule is that if there is a vertex V that is incident to more than K double edges, we immediately know that this vertex must be contained in the feedback vertex set, so we can delete it. And otherwise, if there are more than k square double edges, because each vertex can delete at most k double edges, then this means that uh, there are no uh, feedback vertex set of size at most k, so we can return no. Now, we can bound the uh, number of applications of the persistency reduction as follows. Let alpha be the number of double edges, and this is at most k square from this element. Okay? And let beta be the vertices of uh, degree greater than twice of k, and incident to at least one double edge. Okay? Then, if the persistency reduction introduces uh, no double edges, then this means that uh, S was uh, 
originally incident to some average. Then in this case, uh, alpha does not change, but beta decreases by one. Okay? Because after the reduction, uh, the degree of S becomes at most twice of K, so beta decreases by one. And if uh, the passive sensing reduction introduces C double edges, then alpha increases by C, of course, and beta increases by at most C. Okay? So we can say that twice over alpha minus beta increases by at least one for each application of the passive sensing reduction. And because alpha is at most k square, so we can bound the number of applications of the persistence reduction. Okay? So the number of iterations, is, we can say that the number of iterations is at most k square. Okay? In this way, we can bound the number, of, uh, the number of iterations. And the final part is to show that the LP can be solved in linear time. This is quite technical, so I will give only a overview of the approach. So we use a, a standard approach to solve uh, this kind of combinatorial optimization problem. So instead of solving the uh, original problem, we consider its dual problem and using the augmenting path algorithm to obtain a maximum packing and obtain a minimum say, covering problem. Okay. So let's consider the uh, minimum cut problem. In order to compute the minimum cut, we consider its dual problem, maximum flow problem. And starting from the uh, empty flow, we iteratively augment the current flow by searching for augmenting paths. And this augmenting path can be computed in linear time. And if the augmentation fails, we can construct a cut of the same size. Okay, so we use the same approach here. In order to solve uh, the, our LP, minimum S cycle transversal LP, we consider its dual problem, the parking version, maximum S cycle parking problem. So starting from an empty parking, we iteratively augment the current parking by searching some kind of augmenting passes. And if we find the augmenting pass, then we can augment the current parking. And if we failed, we can construct an S cycle transversal of the same size. So by the LP duality, the current packing, the maximum, and the current trans, uh, the transversal is a minimum. Okay? So this is our approach. But it seems that this approach is quite difficult. So instead, we use the following approach. We consider a special packing, which we call basic packing. And we show that basic packing are easy to uh, augment. So we focus on special packing, basic packing, and in each iteration, we augment the basic uh, basic packing. So if we have a basic packing in each iteration, we can find a larger basic F packing, or we can construct a transversal of the same size. So from LP duality, we can still obtain a maximum packing and minimum covering. Okay. So and in each iteration, uh, the packing size increases by at least half. So the number of augmentation is at most twice of k. And uh, each iteration can be done in linear time. So the time for solving this LP is order of k. Okay. And this is the definition of basic packing. Uh, the basic packing is a packing that consists of the disjoint union of the following uh, two cycles. The first one is a simple cycle, simple cycle of weight one. Uh, the second uh, packing is a uh, sum of all the number of S cycles of weight half. Okay, so for example, in this case, this edge is used twice, this edge is used twice, this edge is also used twice, and these uh, dashed edges are used once. So, so this is a sum of three cycles of weight 0.5. And this uh, is called a wheel. And uh, basically, packing is a disjoint union of these parts. 
Okay, so let's see example. This is a basic uh, parking of size 1.5. Here we have a uh, integral cycle here and a foil of uh, size 1 here. Okay. And now uh, we can augment uh, this kind of basic parking as follows. So we first define an alternating path, as in the case of uh, maximum flow or uh, bipartite matching. <coughs> okay. Uh, we define an alternating path as, uh, as a path, as a concatenation of passes, such that uh, the old path is uh, internally disjoint from the current parting, and the even path is fully contained in the uh, integral path. Like this. So this is an alternating path. Uh, this part is internally disjoint from the current parting, and then we enter to uh, this integral cycle and get out from this part. Okay, and this is alternating cycle. And this is not the alternating cycle because uh, it enters to uh, integral cycle, but it does not use any edges in the cycle. So this is not the alternating cycle. And uh, there are three types of augmentations, and ESA, the first case is like this. If we have an alternating path that comes back to S, then, uh, as in the case of uh, the bipartite matching, by taking the XOR of the current pattern and the alternating cycle, we can aug augment the current pattern like this. The second case is when we find an alternating path to enter a hoyer. In this case, we can augment the pattern by decomposing the hoyer like this. Okay? So like this, we obtain a basic pattern of size 2 here. Like this. So if we have a uh, hoyer and an alternating path to a vertex on that hoyer, then we can always decompose the hoyer to obtain a larger pattern. And the, fi the, fi the final case is somewhat tricky. If we have find uh, uh, two alternating paths to a same vertex, then we can augment the current pattern by introducing a hoyer, like this. Okay? So we have two alternating paths to a same vertex. Then we can obtain, this is a packing of size one. Then by uh, introducing a hoyer here, we can obtain the packing size by half. So by combining these three augmentations, uh, we can uh, augment the current pattern in linear time. And if uh, we failed to uh, find an augmenting path, then as in the case of uh, minimum cut and maximum flow, we can construct uh, its dual optimal solution. Say, for example, in the case of maximum flow, from each path in the flow, we pick the first vertex which separates from the reachable part to the unreachable part in the augmenting passage, then this forms a uh, uh, minimum cut. Similarly, in our case, uh, in the uh, uh, alternating path three, uh, from uh, each integral cycle or each whale, uh, by picking a vertex that separates uh, the reachable part from the unreachable part, we can construct uh, uh, minimum a cycle transpath, a solution to the minimum a cycle transpath. And in this way, uh, we can solve the LP in linear time. So by combining uh, with uh, the bound on the uh, number of iteration, we obtain a linear time kernel for feedback vertex set. Okay, so this is a summary of this talk. Uh, in, in this research, by exploiting the persistency of the LP relaxation, we obtain a linear time and smaller kernel for feedback vertex. Well, I think the reduction rule is much simpler than the one in the textbook. And uh, I'd like to say that the kernelization time is as important as kernel size. Uh, because once we get a linear time kernel, then we can ignore the polynomial part in the running time of FPT algorithm or kernelization afterwards. Okay? 
So I think obtaining the linear time kernel for various problems is important topic of the research. And uh, I wonder whether uh, this persistence is useful for other problems. Uh, I mean, uh, in addition to feedback matrix set, there are many problems which admit the persistency, persistent LPs. For example, uh, odd cycle transversal, or almost two set, or group or subset feedback matrix set, or multi record, or unique level cover, we have uh, persistent LPs. So I wonder whether this is useful for other problems. And actually, say, for example, for group feedback matrix set and subset feedback matrix set, uh, we can obtain a degree bound, but unfortunately, this does not lead to a kernel for this case. Yeah. Okay, so finally, I would like to propose one open problem. Okay, so let's consider all the cycle transversal and almost to such a problem. Okay. For this problem, uh, we can obtain a linear time FPT algorithm by using the uh, LP based approach, and the running time is 4 to k times. Uh, the input size, and this is independently obtained by I and Okanda Yoshida and uh, Ramanaja and the circuit. And for all the cycle transverse QK, all the cycle transverse how, uh, the running time of the linear time of Peter algorithm is slightly improved to 3 to K by uh, using the uh, linear time parameterized appro approximation and iterative compression. On the other hand, if we do not restrict uh, the running time to be linear in N, then there is a faster FPT algorithm. This also uses a, a LP-based approach, but uses more clever branching rules. And the running time is 2.322k. And so if we have a linear time polynomial size kernel for these problems, then we can close the gap between the running time of these two cases. And actually, there is a polynomial size kernel, but I think this does not run in linear time. But I, I, I have no idea how can we refute the existence of linear time kernel. I, 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 I have no idea how can we prove the lower bound of the running time of kernelization. So I, I think this is an interesting open problem. So this is the end of my talk. Thank you very much. Questions? Yeah. So one aspect of feedback predict set kernelization that's still open is to get a polynomial kernel in parallel time. Say to get it in order log n uh, time if you have poly n processors. Mm -hmm. Do you see any ingredients of your approach that might help to get a parallel chronization? Parallel? Yes, like an NC. Uh, well, I, I have no idea. I, I think solving the LP in parallel is difficult. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, yeah, I, I have no idea. <laughs> any more questions? Oh. So you say that it's important to focus on the running time, and usually we swept the poly n on the direct, but now you're sweeping the poly k on the direct. Mm -hmm. What is the poly k in your approach, and is there any hope of improving it? it, it poly k in the running time? Yes. Yeah, well, I, I think we can forget about it because uh, exponential <laughs> always dominates polynomial. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but in the case of n, n versus k, we cannot say that exponential in K dominates polynomial in N, but in the case of K and polynomial in K and exponential in K, I, I think we, we can forget about polynomial in K in the running time. So eventually, like if K to the 100 is dominated by 1.0001 to the K? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, oh, I have no idea. <laughs>